since the 1980s, since uh, the stock market crashed in 1987, or very often that's how analysts or ac ac academics uh, identify a kind of line mark, landmark in terms of transition from absolute belief in Black Scholes model to using the Black Scholes model more as a tool of interpolation. Um, when the stock market crashed in heavily in the States and in Europe in 87, uh, the view that the returns on the asset underlying asset uh, prices uh, conform to a normal distribution uh, was uh, significantly undermined and uh, many option traders transitioned into kind of implicitly believing in uh, Black Scholes to a situation where Black Scholes model was used more as an interpolation tool and what became important was the implied volatility. Uh, so, and a pattern that frequently emerged in terms of volatility was this type of shape Whereas we change the underlying, as we change the strike price or the exercise price of options, the volatility that was consistent with the option price very often took on a form that was not constant or level, but actually when you are deep out of the money or deep in the money, uh, the implied volatility was elevated and this is probably more so typically the case for currency options and for equity options you typically get um, a volatility skew. When we add to this type of uh, structure um, time to maturity, so when we graph in an additional dimension where we say okay for each option, for each um, series of options there is also different exercise prices uh, we can go from a smile to typically a surface so we might think of different time periods we might think of the moneyness of the option and then the associated implied volatility and in this case here would appear as if there's some kind of a for the short time period there's greater definition this definitely would appear to be skew for longer time periods. There seems to be slight leveling, but there's also a skew as well associated with the option. Now, in what we have looked at, uh, we took data uh, from Yahoo Finance on October 23. So October 23, 2005. Um, and we tried to do it as close as possible to uh, I think it was four o'clock closing time, uh, East Coast. So uh, these are the set of options. So this is uh, data from Apple. Uh, there, so we have the uh, for calls and we have puts, and we have a, st a strike price set out here, fifty-five, seventy, seventy-five, all the way in this instance up to up to 190 and then we have the bid and ask the last price so the previous day's price at close and then bid ask on and the call and then the change in the daytime over the day uh, and implied volatility and you can see also if we just again this is implied volatility taken from uh, Yahoo so we'll ca calculate our own implied volatility using the functions we had derived earlier. But again, if we look here, we notice that the implied volatility doesn't appear to be constant. In fact, it just seems to be elevated and then uh, diminishes and then goes back up again, but not quite up to the uh, heady heights of 87%, which it seems extremely high. So what I intend to do here is actually trunk pick the date a little bit um, and make reference a bit to these two columns because at any one time, if we can imagine uh, Apple trading, so with the Apple stock, 
and then around the apple stock there's all these side bets and the side bets are for all these options with varying strikes and for calls and puts but then there was the February contract uh, or the February expiry with all these uh, time periods there was the April 15th expiry with all those uh, um, strikes and there was also June so there's lots of data points and uh, what we might do um, here is just focus a little bit on the volume and the open interest as indicators of liquidity in the market the higher the level of the volume is a daily figure and the open interest is a figure that's for over a longer peri period of time so it's the amount of um, contracts that are still open whereas the volume in the daytime would simply be when the co when the market opens volume would tend to be zero and as the number of contracts trade increases this increases so where we have higher levels of volume and open interest these are clearly areas where the contract where the option trades and that frequently is found where the option uh, exercise is close to is close to the uh, the stock price on a particular day so on October 23 2015 the stock price was um, Apple stock was 119.08 and the again if we look at the volumes of trading going on here typically uh, the volumes tend to be uh, greater close in the region around so if we take if we consider the following in this area here from let's say 100 right through so 50 100 all the way down to to about here so if we look at the volume here trading would seem to be greatest maybe go down one more the trading would correspond uh, to be high it's just on the volume trading seems to be higher in the region where the exercise is closest to the 119 as we move out of this region as we go deep deep away from the uh, as we the moneyness of the option changes and we go deep out of the money deep in the money we find that the volume tends to decline and again here as well the more extreme exercises produce seem to produce lower trading volumes and then we might ask the question the liquidity so when constructing uh, the volatility surface perhaps uh, we could approach this by looking at uh, liquidity based typically around trading volume and also some reference to open interest as we depart from this we also find that um, the bid ask spread seems to open up more what so when we're up here for instance the bid ask spread in this particular option is of the order of well 63 60 to 64 45 so we're looking at a spread of 85 cents whereas down here we're looking at a spread of uh, a much smaller magnitude uh, so 45 cent 40 cent um 40 40 cents 45 35 cent um here it widens the no here it's 20 cent uh, 25 and so on so as we get close to the stock price on a particular uh, day when we look at the trading volumes the volumes tend to be higher closest to when the exercise is closest to the stock price or to the underlying asset price and also the bid ask spread tends to tighten as well if we go away from the 
at the money option what we tend to find is we get very wide bid ask spreads and we also get lower trading volumes so a question then arises do we what information do we, do we want to incorporate in what might we leave out do we take all the options do all these option quotes reflect actual trades or do some reflect more trading activity and others reflecting less trading activity so we might design a filter here where we go with tight spreads and higher volumes okay so for if we take the october contract um october 30th perhaps we would go with this typically this range of 100 to 150. okay okay so uh, let's let's take the 90 here okay, so let's take and um also because of the hyperlink it will bring us into the option data but let's go back let's take the 90 and let's come down to 150 and this is for october october 30th 2015 maturity and let's paste that in okay so i'm just purely looking at uh call options call options and this is for so call options and it's for the october 30th expiry and i'm going to do to repeat the same exercise with the other data so i'll go back and i'm going to now the november date i'm not going to take because the expiry dates seem to be very different but the december contract here again something similar so i take the this is the december 18th expiry and i go with strikes of 90 to 150 and i exclude the other strikes the other options with different strikes and again i seem to be getting the bigger volume positions and the tighter spreads so here the spread is 15 cent whereas here the spread is 20 and it increases a bit 25 would look so okay so let's copy this and paste below paste and this is for again the december 18th 2015 contract so it's again it's the call and it's uh, december 15 2015 expiry so i'll do that with the others and have a look at the data okay so i've basically taken the data and set out a kind of filter where for instance for the december 18th um, expiry I selected the range of exercises going from 90 to 150 that 10th seems to have corresponded with higher levels of volume and also higher levels of open interest the February contract something similar higher levels of volume well certainly close to 120 where the current stock price would have been on October 23rd 2015 april 15th going again from 90 to 150 and again higher volume levels higher open interest the, the june contract also higher volume levels take the, all of those i've put them together and i have got um if you like the different contracts here um but just a summary of the main higher volume open interest positions 
and 